Private schools in most countries have always existed and they have tended to be high cost rather than low cost and they've served the needs of elites. Uh, in some countries, because of state failure to provide adequate quality of schooling, particularly where numbers of children going to school have expanded very rapidly, uh, we've seen private schools recruit down uh, at lower price levels, but in no country do they really access, provide access to the poorest children and households. What is really happening here is that these, these lower fee private schools are providing a kind of differentiated access. People prefer, in some cases, to send their children to them because they believe they may be better than degraded state schools. But they're not really providing places for children who wouldn't otherwise go to school, so let's be clear about that. What is simply happening on the margin is that um, some of these providers may subsidise some places with income from somewhere else, but it can't all be coming from the poorest people because the poorest people don't have cash income in sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. They have very little. It also is the case that you couldn't provide this kind of schooling unless it's run on a voluntary basis um, with people being paid well below minimum wage rates. And that may be a solution for those who wish to volunteer. You know, but it's not a general solution for a system that employs hundreds of thousands of people. Some proponents of low-fee private schools believe that their existence will create a competition which will improve quality in, in public schools. This could be true, but often isn't. First of all, in many parts uh, of developing countries, you don't find a real competition for access. There is only one school, often in a village environment. There is no choice. That school is usually public rather than private. Secondly, where you do have some kind of competition, it may be a competition that's rationed by price. It almost certainly will be. Uh, so that the uh, uh, sense in which people can choose which school to go to is constrained, it's heavily constrained. It's also constrained by the absence of information as to whether what people say about quality is really true. Thirdly, in terms of the um, uh, market that does exist, uh, it might be true that private schools only have to be a little bit better than a public school to attract children away from them if they can pay. And this is no recipe for sustained development, nor is it a... a um, a recipe for curriculum outcomes that reflect the interests of the community uh, as a whole rather than the competitive interests of individuals. Children from the poorest sections of the community should not be paying fees at all, it should be free. Uh, education is a public good and it's the interest of most in, of a society to make sure that it doesn't have an underclass of uneducated people who are illit become illiterate adults and are probably unemployable. If the state is corrupt and rotten and extracting rentals, then the problem is to fix that. It's not to believe that the state can go away. The state is the guarantor of rights. It is the guarantor of protection of people who would otherwise be vulnerable. It's the protector of minorities who would be excluded if it didn't exist. Um, and there's no obvious sense in which private sector providers uh, operating in a market will uh, look out for the interests of those who have no purchasing power and who have many vulnerabilities. Bond states the states distribute access to public goods and education like health which prevents communicable disease uh, are public goods. If the state is corrupt, which it may be, the problem is to fix the state, not to, to try and abolish it. Uh, nobody believes this I think in rich countries, or at least there are no rich countries which abandon public education programs uh, for the mass of their population. There are no middle income countries that do. It strikes me as rather extraordinary that anybody would advocate that the poorest countries with the weakest government. Remember that if the state is corrupt, it's almost certain that the private sector will be at least as corrupt. Who corrupts the state?